Welcome to this quick video. Well, it's actually not a quick video, it's quite a long video, but this video is basically me doing a coaching call with my high tier students. My high tier students that mainly already have clients are already making money and I am helping to make more money. So going from 2K to 10K, from 5K to 15K, to $10,000 a month, to $30,000 a month. And this is basically an exclusive uh, coaching call that I had in the group about authenticity, about how to handle objections, what the purpose is of questions and how you can actually mainly move towards up. So without further ado, uh, here's the coaching call. Enjoy it, this exclusive piece of content. Sit back, relax, and hopefully you'll learn a lot from it. Um, I've had a question uh, of Ilias, who is unfortunately not here, so I hope he's just watching it back right now. Um, he's already closing. He's closing deals on an occasional basis. So the one thing that he was facing as a problem was that he wasn't sure whether you should like be a salesperson and just directly go into the questions because that's more of an old school way of closing or if it's smarter to really have a conversation with people and being authentic because all in all i think that's good all in all the one thing that uh that is changing in the sales space right now is that mainly the thing that people are underestimating is the use of authenticity so how you're yourself, how you're in a conversation, laid back, having a conversation, because it's just a lot better and more authentic way of selling just in general. Now, of course, in a lot of these sales calls or a lot of these, these coaching sessions, uh, courses, you just learn a very corporate way of selling, which means you have to be direct and have hard hitting questions. And uh, are you good? It's good. Um, so anyway, the question, mainly the question that I also have for you guys, what would you think would work better if you have the direct version of sales or would you think you should have an authentic conversation with each other? Just raise your hand for a second. Authentic way is better. I think uh, the other way is just outdated. And people, especially in this age, they just want a genuine connection and that lowers their guard more. Yes, I would agree. Thank you. Um, here's, here's the issue. Um, yes, the authentic way of selling is great, but the issue that most people are facing is that they're purposely, uh, purposelessly going into a conversation, which means that if you're going into a convo and you're trying to sell, you still should have a framework of knowing in what place or why you're specifically using the words you're using. And you can do that in an authentic way. I remember Sayed being, uh, getting coached by me and starting to sell. And he, he just tried to copy my way of speaking to people, which is a very fun and nice way of speaking to people. But he didn't quite understand why I was doing those types of things. Right? When I give you a compliment, I mean to give you the compliment. I'm looking for it because I want to lower your guard. So the reason behind me giving you the compliment, even though it's authentic and it's me, is to A, lower your guard and give relatability. The one thing that people quite often underestimate and just don't do is knowing that every single thing that you have to say in a conversation with sales needs a purpose, needs a motivation. So if it's motivationless, you just deviate from your pitch. You just deviate from the framework. There's no IDA formula there. It's just... Oh, I'm just having a conversation now. And then because you're just having a conversation, you're completely going out of the complete space and it has no purpose. And this whole conversation is going nowhere. You're one hour in, you're not efficient. And at the end of the one hour, the person tells you that he doesn't have any money. Like, do you get what I mean? But you did make a good connection. The other issue of having a too deep of a connection is you might like him too much and you become sympathetic. Right, we all know what symp sympathy is. Still do, right? When you feel the same way as the person does, you won't be able to give the best solution. This is why a psychologist or a lawyer cannot work with people that are too close to them, because it's hard to give a rational solution if you're if yourself are emotionally invested. So yeah, that being said. The main thing that I really want to talk about is asking purposeful questions and having a right goal in mind. This is also something that I talked about. We're doing the Thailand Mastermind, as you might know. 
um, uh, Leon and Noah are both having conversations. So we're looking at this conversation. We're seeing that, hey, I am asking something, but it's just like the technique that I've learned in the sales call or in the course. But instead of just looking at the technique, what's the underlying reason that I'm telling you to specifically do this? If um what, what was the what was the quote like i'm still thinking about it right that was the thing that you said so so when somebody says to you i'm still thinking about it then you're supposed to give them acknowledgement that you understand that but when you're saying oh yeah of course you have to think about it. it's the most logical thing ever when you say something like that you're basically insinuating that it's obvious that you have to like not be confident about this decision but when i'm saying that you have to be understanding it's about even understanding when somebody's counter arguing you. So the counter argument in this case is that he has to think about it. So, well, in this case, I, I'm trying to understand why you have to think about it. Could you please clear it up? It shows that you want to be understanding. It shows that in the essence, you're just going with this person. You don't, you're not saying, why do you have to think about it? No, no, no. You're, you're saying, hey, I, I, I get it. Like uh, for most cases, there might be a reason why you have to think about anything. I just want to make clear what the reason is that you have to think about it. Once again, authentic ways of selling. Once again, asking the right question. This question has a purpose. What is this purpose? This purpose is to lower his guard, have a better understanding of what it means that he's saying. And the more you actually do stuff like that, the more the understanding comes in and you don't have to ask. You already feel like, oh, okay, I see. So based on the fact that you're telling me that you're trying, like you're still doubting, I feel like you don't really see the value yet. Well, you don't see it, but that's the reason why. So let me just give you something that could make you see the value of my product a lot better. Let me ask you a different question. Have you ever in life wanted to learn sales? Whatever, right? So this is like the way you can get there. Coming back to the thing that I was talking about to say it, say it filled by copying my technique. That was because he was inauthentic. The most authentic version of you understands him or her the best way, right? The best way you can start understanding yourself is to ask yourself a lot of questions. And all of these questions are being asked in the first three modules of this course. You ask yourself who you are, what it is, what drives you, what goes there. You go through your limiting beliefs. And at some point, you know why you do what you do. Once again, you have the motivation, right? Now you have the motivation of yourself. Exact same thing that we talked about, but then not in a sentence, but in life. Because this motivation is clear, you know from what words to speak, from what core to speak. And that is where authenticity comes from. It comes because you are fully you. I am fully me when I'm talking to any of you guys. But to any person, I am behaving just a little bit differently. I'm putting on a different jacket. If I'm talking to Delana, I'm, I'm going to be a bit sweeter because she's a woman. When I'm talking to Florian, I'm going to fucking swear to this guy. Why? Two different people. I'm same me, different jacket. When I go to my little brother, it's still me, but I have a different jacket on. When I talk to my mom, it's still me, but I have a different jacket on. I'm still being authentic. And this is, once again, the same core principle that we talked about what Ilya's had as a question. Being authentic is important. Being you is important. Doing the things that define you is important. When you're putting up a voice, hey, how is it going? You're talking to Jamie. Well, it might work, but it's not authentic, right? You know what works if you go back and look, all right, this is the best sales tactic to use this insinuation in my voice and yada, yada, yada. But you have to look at, all right, cool. Well, I am Jamie. So how could I use the same, uh, this, how could I use this same authentic and enthusiastic way of talking in my favor, in my jacket, in my authentic way of being? So when you look at all of these principles that are in the course of unselling, go look at yourself and see how you would do it. Liam, for example, no, no worries. Um, I, I looked at Leon. I look, George is also here. I, we were looking at their uh, their pitches. They had like a full script written down, and I was like reviewing what they were doing. And I just noticed immediately that there were some specific words in there that I would never hear them say. So don't say it. Like people immediately feel 
that when there's like one word and you're like reading it and you're like, Ugh. Like, like you don't want to say it, then don't say it. Don't. A script is made as a framework. If you go to module five or the first sales module, the first thing that I do is tell you that a um, script is unnecessary. A framework is necessary. But the thing that they give you at your account, at your client, it's a framework. Sure, word for word, you could read everything that's there. But at some point, you got to realize that you have to do it yourself. You can go to any client, to any account, to any person, and they could give you a whole fucking shtick with whatever it is that it's saying. But at some point, you got to learn to, all right, but if somebody says something here, I'm fucked. I don't know what to say. If something happens here and I deviate, I don't know how to go back to the script. Well, you have to understand what the motivation is of all of those words written down. What's the purpose of this question that's there? Do I actually have to say this question of can, or can I just turn it around and ask it in my own way? How can I change it to an extent where it's going to be valuable and it's going to have the same type of motivation, but in my own words? You can ask to somebody, hey, what are your goals in life? But to some people, that's like, yo, that's kind of rude, like direct. Like I, I don't like I wouldn't like to ask somebody on a first call, what are your goals? Like, tell me what your goals are. Hey, what's the thing that ticks like that that makes you happy? What are you doing? Okay, well, well, what do you want to achieve with that? Like, like, are you like looking into something that would you, that you want to do? Is it like and now casually, I'm actually getting to a point where I completely know all of the goals of these this person, of this lead. But I'm asking it in a different way. And here's the thing. Like in most of the courses that I give, I ask you to ask more questions to really have something set up straight. Um, and based off of that, I try to better it, change it, and do better. Guys, I literally see you guys on the background, by the way. Sorry. And no worries. The more questions you ask on how your script looks and the more you change it for yourself. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, just, just give me the other one. Just give me the Coke Zero that's in the fridge. Um, the more questions you ask on the script that you have, the more you can change into something that's comfortable. And the good thing about doing sales is you have a lot of conversations. You have a lot of calls. And based off of those calls, you can keep on changing your script in a way that you see that you get the most results. Right? That's the great thing about sales. Like, you have immediate feedback whether something worked or didn't work. You're talking to a person. You're seeing, all right, this worked. This didn't work. I should have done something better. But it's all on you to be able to reflect, to see it, and then change it. That's a great thing. That's why you're recording your calls. You can look back on your own conversation like, ah, I should not have said that. Ah, this is not, okay, now I hear what I'm not doing well. And just based off of that, you will improve massively. And if you have the other people around here in the community with you, it will upgrade you massively. All right. So far, that is everything that I wanted to say. Any questions about that? I'm seeing that Damien has raised his hand. I know that you weren't here the first 10 minutes, but uh, we can work with that. Oh, sorry, man. I was I was in the room. So uh, oh, you were? What happened? Yeah, I were in the room, but I didn't know. Did you hear it? Did you, did you hear it? I, I didn't hear it, but I was uh, like 5, 4, 11. I was already in the in the Freedom Society. Oh, but oh, I got, oh, good, oh, good. What's the question? Um, what, what you were telling about uh, ask certain questions to certain people. How do you know? Uh, to categorize someone in uh, in um, some type of people? Um, well, that is mainly experience. Um, but based off of the questions and answers that they give you, you can make better questions, right? Um, the trick of be becoming a closer that is making 20000 to $30,000 a month, euros a month, is about perfecting the art of asking questions. Because the better questions you can ask, the deeper you can get to problems. And it's about being able to take something emotional and frame it in a certain type of way that it will come to you. Um, quick one, right? We were watching a Mr. Beast video yesterday. And this is this is like a trick that's called anchoring. We, we can use it anywhere. Um, we look at the video, the video is about uh, every single day that this person is in a grocery store, he gets $10,000. So everybody's going around in a room and we're having a conversation and they're saying, yeah, man, okay, I, I would stop at 100 days because that's a million dollars and that makes the most sense to me. Yeah, I think that too, I think that too. All right, well, cool, we're there. And then something popped in my head. Actually, I remember Mr. B saying something online that some, some person went for like a year. I think they were already busy for a year. All right, all right everybody, let, let's change up the numbers. Let's change up the numbers. 
somebody wrote down 180, the other person wrote down 250. That's because now suddenly you've got anchored to a higher point. Sorry, at the same time, I need to quickly put my phone, I'll, I'll put it in a second in the charter. Because you get anchored to a high point, and that's the first thing that you hear, the last thing that you'll get is a, a bit more easy. Mm, something that they've noticed is that um, like like trees are in uh, the highest tree was like almost a kilometer or something, but I, but but that's fake. So it wasn't a kilometer. But based off of that, how much would your guess be that this tree would be in meters? Type it in the chat. So it wasn't a kilometer, but that's a lie. But based off of that, how tall do you think this tree would be? Type it in the chat. Let me just quickly open a chat. Seven hundred ninety meters is what Florian says. Damien says eighty meters. Eight hundred meters. There you go. So, before I go read any other comments, it is one hundred ten meters because the gravity wouldn't be able to get it. But because I started by saying that one kilometer is a lie, that's the first thing that you hit. So you anchor point, and you're trying to think logically, like. Yeah, no, no, a kilometer wouldn't make sense. But if I just go a little bit under it, it might make sense. That's because you're anchored to something higher. Because I framed you in that way. Now, suddenly, it's a lot easier. Who was at my event in Holland? I remember Delano was there. Florian wasn't there. Damien, you weren't there. George was there. All right. So at the first start of the event, I said, who of himself thinks that he or she is a helpful person, somebody that likes to help people? Well, 90% of the state, like everybody raised, raised their hand. Afterwards, I asked, all right, I need somebody's help. Could somebody come on stage? And 80% of people raised their hands. But if I would have asked everyone at that point without asking that first question, if they could come and help me out, nobody would, would have done it. Because once again, I framed them into being that. That was a very interesting moment in D. George. So coming back to your question, Damien, you can easily change the questions based on how you frame them. So if you frame somebody, um, right now we're working on this amazing deal. Uh, this amazing deal that we're gonna do in Holland. We're gonna uh, be a huge project and um, get like thousands of people to start with cold calling, cold sales, because I've just noticed that a lot of people are getting lazy and it's a huge product. With that, we are making deals with, excuse me, call centers because I want to place everybody at a trusted call center to be able to have them a job immediately and to do it correctly. And talking with these people, they're, they're obviously going to give us money for the people that we bring in. So I frame them for, because I already know how this is going to go. Yeah. We're going to give you five euros for every sale that is making. Like da, 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 da. So I don't want that. I tell them immediately, this is the position that I'm in. I show them that I'm the authority in the conversation. Like this is using sales. I've done million dollar deals and this is the exact same thing. I show them that I'm the authority. And even though I have nothing to prove for, I've never done this before. I've never closed any person for a cold calling. I do give them the idea by framing it in a way that's so rational that the whole conversation is just logical. Yeah, I mean, I have a high ticket sales course. I've been doing this for a while. I mean, I have X amount of students. All my students are performing like this because we're teaching them this and this and that. And just be, because they're seeing that, and I'm saying that with confidence, the whole frame is being set to be something like, oh, that makes sense. And now they're probably are, are, have a pitch ready. They want to pitch me. All right, let's do this amount of, or this. Hey, I'm talking with like 70 different offices. This is the deal that I'm bringing on the table. So... I don't want to get screwed. I don't want to screw you over. In my opinion, this is the fairest deal that I can. And it might be very a little bit down and up. How does that sound? And they don't have anything else to say to me because I've already framed it in a way where they know that I've got been fucked over before. I've already framed it in a way that they know I'm the authority in the A side on the table, even though I'm not like they can just say no and they're just out. And because of this frame and the right questions that I've been asking, I'm in a position where the deal is being set and I don't have anything to worry about. Right questions, right frame. This is the most important thing that a frame can give you. All right, next question. In the meantime, I'm just gonna put this one uh, in a charger because I, unless you don't have it. Was that, no, no questions? Yes, question? Hi, 
Is, is this you nobody has a question or they mean you still have a question that did I even answer your question correctly or no so if I uh, write it uh, good it's just like fishing you're throwing in some little bit of bait and after that when you uh, uh, you feel what type of person it is you throw in the right questions and you ask certain things about those people do I understand so, this correctly? Yes and no. So, uh, yes, you are throwing in bait, but when you're throwing in bait, you know what kind of fish you want to catch. So, for instance, for every section of a sales call, um, there is a moment that you need to catch a specific type of fish. So you need to ask a specific type of question. When you're trying to get somebody's attention, you're asking a different question than when you want to know what their pain points are. When you're fishing for the pain points, you throw out a different question because the goal is completely different. Um, this is also something that I talked about with Leon. This is what, like, I'm, I'm making a newer, uh, a newer, deeper version of like the high tech closing course. And uh, what I've noticed, this is like a deeper version. When you're going out and fishing, you always have to think about the purpose of the question. This is the same thing that I talked about in the first 10 minutes. Everything is a motivation. And every, like, once, let's just forget about the reactions. Let's just think about like what kind of questions you're asking. You're only asking a question if you know what the motivation is of what you're trying to get to. Sure, you can ask, what are your goals in life? But I want to know, like, I'm going to frame it first with what is the thing that you're doing first? All right. So based off of that, I know that this person is making around this type of money. All right. I'm going to instead of asking, hey, does he have a lot of money in his pocket? I'm going to ask, how are his investment habits? How is that going? Have you invested in crypto? And now the purpose of that question right, as it has a motivation, is to know whether he has something done with like putting stuff in his pocket or whatever. Oh, I have a business. Oh, that's cool. Like, what is the business that you do? Oh, that is a good paying market, isn't it? It is a good paying market. And based off of that reaction, you already know, all right, cool. He might have the budget to invest in this program that I have. Yeah, understandable. So you always look purposefully to set something up and then ask a question that is not directly that question because that's the thing that salespeople just completely sniff out like when you're talking to a to an entrepreneur and you're closing a deal that's worth 20k 20k 40k whatever it is <laughs> like you, you can't ask him so what's your goal like what do you want to achieve like when you're working with an like that stuff doesn't work you got to be a bit more subtle with that um and by getting the right questions, you just have to ask yourself, all right, what is the first goal that I'm trying to achieve in this part of the conversation? And now I need to find a question for that. Um, in the appointment setting course, um, I, 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 there's like an exercise where you make 50 questions. And those 50 questions, because you have to type it out, it's the same thing when you're doing sales. You got to go to a deeper question before you get to a place. Um, the good thing about appointment setting is that you have a delay. So when somebody gives you a response, you can think of what you're going to type instead of like just react. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I've talked with That's Dylan uh, one hour before this uh, uh, for this for this meetup. I've talked with yeah. Dylan about personality types. He had uh, he had told me that I need to read the book "Surrounded by Idiots" because yeah. there you get a really good overlook uh, of the uh, personality types and how you can counter those questions and ask the right questions to the right persons. I feel like is um, that a good one or? Um, uh, you're overcomplicating stuff for yourself at this moment. You don't need that. Okay. Um, um, yes, it's an amazing book. Yes, you will learn a lot of things, but try to get to a fundament first. So, uh, Damien, do you do any sports? Yeah. What sports do you do? Boxing, fitness, and paddle. All right. Well, if you do boxing, right? Before you're fucking doing back fists and like uh, Superman jumps and all of that other stuff, just learn the jab first. Like even before you hook, you just do your jab first, then you do a straight. And before you have those things sorted out, that's when you start doing hooks. That's when you're getting setups in. But start getting the fundaments, right? Start getting your leg work straight, your footwork going forward, getting the jab as perfected as you can before you do anything else. And you will have an effective fight and knock out your opponent with just a straight and a jab, like both of you. Simply, you can win a complete fight with that but if but if you start doing weird shit 
<laughs> like you won't even win your fight. Focus on like the main things. This course has everything that you need. I, I appreciate that you're like trying to look out for everything else, but get the fundamentals straight. Understand okay. the fundamentals. Understand the basics of human psychology without needing to go in trying to understand other people. The easiest way you can understand other people is by asking them questions. Right. You don't need to like try to overanalyze their personality type and be like, all right, he's red or he's green. So I need to do this question. No, no, no. Just in the moment, see what this person is saying. Based off of this, this, this shit that this person is saying, you can give the best reaction in that moment. Focus on this one still at the moment. Focus on this one person in the moment. Don't think about 60 other personality types and try to confuse yourself because that's just going to make it all worse for you. Easy. Yeah. Easy lemon squeezy. Thank you. No worries. You're right. having a question. Yo, oh dude, you're late. What's up, man? Yeah, I just finished the call and the guy didn't like his credit card didn't work. It was fucking ten minutes late, but yeah, I'm still in. Did, did you close him? No. Uh -uh. Ah, sure. follow up. Uh, we, well, the first 20 minutes of this was all about the questions that you asked me before. So I feel like you should watch that back. Yeah. Thank God it's recorded. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. But if you have any specific other questions, then you might as well ask them now to me. Yeah. I have one. If it's not like asked before, like the question is how long should, um, discovery part, which is the part where I ask the question should be long. Like sometimes I do think that even though I ask many questions, the pain points aren't revealed yet. Or sometimes I ask like too few questions and the pain points are not revealed. Like I don't understand how much it sh the length of the discovery part should be. Well, there are two two ways of going at this, right? Like people either get motivated by pain or get motivated by desire. So not always do you specifically get to a deeper form of pain points, but you can get to pain points by knowing what the desires are of these people. If somebody doesn't want to tell you that they like they're they're broke and want to get out of a situation of that they don't have money, just ask them what they want to have. So, oh, I want to have a million dollars. Why? Why do you want to have a million dollars? Then, like, what's the reason for that? Yeah, because of this and this and this reason. Oh, so now suddenly you have more information instead of just focusing on the pain points, focus on the good, and just go to the counterpart of that and the negative side. So, is that because you haven't had that before? Is that because you? are seeking for something that you've never like do you get what i mean yeah i got it i got it, I got it. All right. so so that's the first so how long do you do you go by that well the main thing is is you're just having a natural conversation you're asking the right questions with a purpose this, I, i'm not sure how long you've been here by the way but like just just to reflect on what i said before. yeah, yeah I, I got the, the think of actually uh, mirroring back be, before even digging down uh, with the question yeah, I got that point. It's, it's not only mirroring back, it's about really trying to understand what the person is about. So if you try to understand where a person is coming from when they're saying a specific thing, so what's the motivation behind the words that they're saying to you? Somebody could say, I want to learn how to do high ticket sales or I want to learn, I want to get coached. I just really want to get coached because... I am. I don't want to have the course or whatever. So you're like, okay, that's something that they could mean. Is that what they say? So the thing is that they haven't been heard before. They they feel like they haven't been probably guided before. So this is the meaning behind those words. And by knowing it, you understand your client better. So you could actually find pain points and even normal things that they're saying. So you're saying, hey, I understand where you're coming from. We have the best coaching that we can give you. Let me just ask you a different question. How was the coaching that you've had before? Yeah, it sucked. It wasn't great. All right, cool. That's good to know. And how do you feel that this person that I'm working for is going to help that? Well, I've seen his content. I've seen the videos. And I feel like it's just going to be a lot better. And now you suddenly really know what the pain points are just by listening very well to what it exactly is that these people are saying. Always go a level deeper than just looking at the surface level. That really differentiates a good salesman and a bad one. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, I'm good for now. Let, let me get back to the chat on WhatsApp between me and you. Maybe I get something else. Well, anyone else a question? I mean, I don't mind. I, it's like 6 p.m. here. <laughs> You have the opportunity to ask me any questions. I'm here. I'd love to answer them. 
if you're shy, you can also just type it in the chat. Oh yeah, Rabbi, Rabbi. Like I'm always talking. Sorry if if I'm the next guy. Like if there is some someone else, I can. No, well, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. All right, cool. So, um, I, I'm always talking with my friends, you know, and they told me that 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 my type of selling it's like 2017, right? Yeah, I talked about this the first 20 minutes. Like literally, yeah. I literally used that as an example. I just told you how to like watch the video back about authenticity right. you, you'll you, you, you this massive massive value that you will use and can do it but is there any other question based off the authenticity and like the question like the old school selling uh no i'm good if it's recorded i will watch it back what what is the reason because you just told me that uh that person that you talked to you didn't close him or her right yeah i didn't close him because um he said that his credit card didn't work on the on the stripe link which is right. kind of so, weird. It's new. Yeah, what do you mean new? I, I don't know, which is kind of new, did you say that? I, no, which is kind of weird, because Stripe is accepting literally everything in terms of credit. Right. So are you actually that naive, Ilias, or are you just trying to lie to yourself? Wait, say again? Are you actually that naive? That naive? What do you mean by that naive? <laughs> so... You're telling me that there's this guy, right? Stripe yeah. usually always works. And yeah. Now his credit card doesn't work. Yeah. A uh, matter of fact, I said, which is kind of weird because maybe it's a smoke screen. Maybe it's uh, it's an act. Like it's a smoke, bro. It's an act. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's talking shit. It's talking shit. So, uh, my question to you is, why would you think he would use something like that? Maybe he didn't get the value. Maybe he didn't get the value of the service. All right. So why wouldn't he get the value? Maybe because, well, one hundred percent, it's my fault, right? Because maybe I didn't explain it the right way, I didn't show the value the right way. Based off of this person and the persona that he portrayed to you, right? What was what? What did you get? Like, what was his pain? What was the desire? What product is this even? Like, give me a give me a quick brief. So basically, this is a service where we we have traders like into our team that basically manage your account and then they share profits, right? And this guy awesome. basically had uh, had different relationships in the past with different traders, but had like, you know, bad experiences and now he's looking for something more. Um, right. What I've seen, because our prices are like super over the market, but because we deliver good quality, right? And uh, from what I've seen, uh, I think it's it's the price it's the price, maybe. It's the price because it's too, it's too it's, high. Cause... It's never the price. It's never the price. Okay, Elias, it's ne the price is never the, the problem. Seeing the value is the problem. So why? what would be a reason of this person? Well, first of all, how hard did you try to sell him? Um, so when I was actually in the rejection part, like I was trying to, to make him pay with different ways. Like I told him even you have crypto mm -hmm. PayPal. Yeah. You're not answering my question. How hard did you try to sell it? And which part of the call? <laughs> the complete call. The complete call. Maybe I was maybe I was too pushy. All right. Well, there you go. So now you already have like a better. So the best way on becoming better, Elias, is by first of all chilling a little bit. I I, I notice on just how your whole demeanor is. Even when I'm asking a question, you already want to like, no, 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 like, uh, like you're coming, you're coming back at. Do you, do you, <laughs> is that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. Uh, I'm too. I gotta chill. All right, that that's the first. Second of all, only by letting go from everything that you've already known, and trying to put new stuff into that, you can change and make it make it better. So, your old school style might work on quote unquote weak and dumb people because they they cannot choose for themselves and it's not very an ethical way of closing too i don't fully support it it's a good learning school if you're starting out with that trying to get somebody that is not really interested into somebody that's really interested but it's a lot more fulfilling if you could actually convince someone that the product is good instead of pushing them towards it and like mentally blocking them so that they don't have any choice than to just pay right it just gives you better quality too if you can actually motivate somebody to tell them that this service will actually change their lives in a profitable and good way 
correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you want to make the horse drink, the horse needs to be thirsty or else it's just standing at the water. Yeah. In your case, you're pulling this fucking horse and pushing his head on the water, hoping that he drink. But that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's your friends are probably talking about like the authentic selling, right? Like, yeah, you got to be more authentic. You shouldn't be more pushy and both work. But if you could do this pushy, quote unquote, selling in your own authentic way, now suddenly everybody will say yes to you and they will love it. They'll, they'll say yes with a smile. It's about being able to ask questions and connect it on a subconscious level instead of telling people exactly what it is that they need. Like I could tell you that you need $2,000 or you need $10,000 a month and $10,000 a month will change your life because you just told me that you need money, right? Yes. All right, then let's go. Where's your credit card? But oh, no, no, you just told me that you want it. Where's your credit card? Let's do it. Well, I don't feel comfortable doing it, but this is this is this is how you, in essence, this is the way you're feeling, making the people feel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very bluntly said, what's the thing that you'd like to to have in life? I like to have like a chilled life. What is being chilled? What what does that mean to you? Just you know, being able to travel around, do whatever. Um, just pinpoint a number for me right now on what would give you that life of comfort. I don't know, like. Six thousand. Six? You think six is enough, man? You gotta pay taxes. All right, ten, ten, ten. Okay, so you're telling me that ten thousand dollars is the money that would make you happy and pinpoint it and just give you the best life possible. Yes. I wasn't the person telling him that he wanted ten thousand dollars, but by asking these questions, I made him tell it to me. It came from him. It felt like he made the decision. And now the trick is about asking questions to connect his desires towards my product. So have you been looking into things to get there yet? So, well, you know, I've been looking, but I haven't found anything yet. So like, what is the thing that you're like, well, you're talking about trading, like just, just to like, would you say that you're emotionally stable? Well, that's a weird question. No, no, but honestly, like, just, just think about it. Would you say that you're emotionally stable? I suppose. Well, if you are, there's one thing that can change your life completely. What's that? Trading. But tell you what, if you're not emotionally stable, because it's quite hard when you see the numbers go up, there are people that can do it for you. And you don't even have to think about it. How would it sound to you if you could just basically have someone to just trade for you that have been doing it for years in a way where you don't have to look at it? It's, I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. All right. So imagine this, right? You put money in a trading and it goes up and up and down and up and up and down. You get stressed because you see your money go up. What if there's somebody for you that will do that and you will just take the profits and just give the money once and that's it? I mean, that, that kind of sounds good. I mean, you don't have to believe me. Here's the website. Here are people that have it worked for. These are testimonials. This is a video explaining all of this stuff. If you're looking at this, wouldn't this be something that could change your life completely? And now I'm asking another question. And this question is basically connecting the thing that this person wants based off of the product that I'm selling. Mm. They're seeing this product. They're seeing their life and vision with the money that they want to make. They're seeing all of these problems getting solved just mainly because I'm not telling them, but asking them a question. And the question is just visualizing their dream life. And it's connected towards this product that I just told them. Mm. So yeah, that's the difference in selling. But if you just simply make module three and four, you will see like the difference between that. What module are you at right now? I finished them both, but like my main takeaway is that like I've also seen it the way you talk right now that I forward them and make the sale by asking questions. Like yes. sometimes I I make the connection. They don't make the connection, right? So I need to make the connection by making the right questions. Yes, I, I hope you would already understand that after at least three weeks with me, but like, okay, sure. <laughs> no worries, all good. You'll get there. <laughs>
Yeah, and it, like changing the style of selling, like it's it's one of the hardest things because you feel yourself uncomfortable. It, and you should. That's the like in comfort, uh, you will never grow. But in discomfort is where the growth actually happens. Yeah, makes sense. All right. I'm going to do one more question and then my, my food is getting cold. So I kind of want to go eat it. <laughs> Is it everything clear for everyone, by the way? Like all of the things that we said, did you guys write along? You can still watch it back and get some good things out of it. Viable? Loud and clear. Yes. All right. So if there's nothing Maybe. else. Yeah. Does every question has to be uh, make it visual? Uh, not, not, not necessarily, but we as people are visual people, but not like if I'm asking you how well how was your day yes maybe but uh fuck uh how much money do you have like i don't know like it's not a not, not a direct visual question it just needs to have a purpose so the thing that you have to like i mean how does freedom look like you that that's a super visual question george what do you mean <laughs> like um there are a lot of um ways that you can make the visual even better but it doesn't necessarily mean that anything has to be visual. When I was selling the newspaper, the easiest way for me to sell it is asking them, like, how would it be for you to have the newspaper every single day at your doorstep with that little coffee and a sandwich in the morning? You can smell the newspaper already. And they just started to miss it and they wanted it again because you use the visual effect of your voice, of the things that you're talking about to even make it better, to even make it more visual. But that also was a motivated question, right? That motivation was to make it visual for the person. When you're talking about the pain, uh, it's important to make it visual because you don't want that person to be there anymore. You want to get them out of there. So like, would you really want to still be in your life right now where you're not making the type of money, where you're having problems, where your bills are just adding up? Do you want to have that life? No, you don't. So what is the thing that you need to do in order to get there? I'm not telling them, take my course. I'm telling them, what is the thing that you need? And they, they'll see it themselves. Even if I would tell them, take my course, they wouldn't even take it as serious as they would as me asking the question. Because if I ask the question, they themselves can see and feel the motivation of going for it instead of me telling them to do something and go for it. This is a way more long-term way of selling because people actually start to do stuff with the things that you're selling them to instead of you forcing them into something and eventually they'll just give up and don't get there was that an answer to you like i, I you asked me something i end up something completely else but like whatever it's just how i am ah, you were looking for a question that's visualized the answer right now i was looking for a question that didn't visualize the answer george but it doesn't matter <laughs> um all right, guys, uh, that is it for today. Uh, for the unfined people, I'll see you in two weeks. For the uh, Escapade and Freedom Plus members, I'll see you in one week. For all my one-on-one -on -one coaches, uh, send me a message to plan in your next call. And I wish you a very good Sunday. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please be sure that you leave a like if you really liked it. Subscribe. And uh, more importantly, after watching this video, since you've already watched this video, I would really appreciate you going down below. Uh, you can apply for coaching with me if you're interested. I mean, it's up to you. Uh, you can plan a call with me or with my team. Or you can basically just watch all the other free content. There's like $8,000 worth of free content down there. Comment, send me an Instagram DM. And who knows, I'll give you some free access to some certain type of stuff that you can just easily handle too. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. I'm Brebin Ghazali. <laughs>